morning and welcome to worship. My name is Lee Nish. I'm pastor at Sparks United Methodist Church. And uh, you're probably wondering once again in this series of messages, where on earth am I? Uh, you'll remember two weeks ago, we started out the series of uh, foundations in fragile times at a construction site here in Sparks, Nevada. Uh, last week, we went down to uh, a beautiful park, uh, Mayberry Park in West Reno, and we're right by the Truckee River. Today, for those of you who are familiar with our Sparks United Methodist Church facility, you'll notice that I'm in the Charlotte M. Schmidt Memorial Library, which is actually behind our Fellowship Hall. And the reason I'm here today is because we're going to consider the third issue in the Foundations for Fragile Times series, which is building a relationship with Jesus. Now, you're probably asking the question, well, why are you sitting in a library? Jesus does not sit in libraries. No, you haven't seen Jesus sitting in the library for those of you who have read the Gospels, but you know that much of what we know about Jesus comes not only through uh, libraries, but specifically through the most important library there is, and that's the Bible. So stay tuned, fasten your seatbelts, and uh, be ready to worship God through music. I've been running in circles, jumping the hurdles, getting caught in a rush to do too much. I'm feeling kind of worn down. All this checking the boxes, trying to be flawless. As we spin in my head, catching my breath, too afraid to slow down. I tell myself to keep this up. God wants more than just my life. But I've been complicating things just like me to overthink. Gotta keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero. Cause it all comes down to this love God and love people. We're living in a world that keeps breaking. But if we wanna find a way to change it, it all comes down to this love God and love people. Oh, this is freedom. Keys of the kingdom. Knowing life will be found when love can be loud. Cause love is what it's all about. I tell myself to keep this up. All God wants is just my life. No more complicating things. No more need of a thing. Gotta keep it real simple. Keep it real simple. Bring everything right back. Zero. Cause it all comes down to this Love God and love people We're living in a world that keeps breaking But if we want to find a way to change it It all comes down to this Love God and love people Love is patient, love is kind Rescues hearts and changes lives Love is all we need to make things right, gotta keep it real simple. It's really so simple. Gotta keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero. Cause it all comes down to this love God and love people. We're living in a world that keeps breaking. And if we want to find a way to change it, it all comes down to this love God and love people. Hi, my name is Megan Bay, and I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Hi, it's me again, and we have our second scripture reading. That is 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. So again, we are in the Sparks United Methodist Church Library. Not because Jesus spends a lot of time here, but if it's important for you, and I hope it is, that you cultivate a relationship with Jesus, then the way to do that is to cultivate a relationship with the Bible. The Bible being a book, and certainly we have many Bibles in this library, and we have many commentaries about the Bible in this library, and we have many books written about the Bible in this library, and we have many books written about the characters, Bible characters. In fact, you could spend the rest of your life in this library reading all about Jesus. Here's my concern. Knowing about Jesus is not the same as knowing Jesus. And that's why it's important, particularly as we focus on this series of messages, uh, Foundations in Fragile Times, particularly in fragile times, it won't count much if you know a lot about Jesus. It will count totally if you know Jesus. And so the whole point of reading, reading the Bible and reading the Bible is for you to know Jesus not know about Jesus. In other words, treat Jesus as subject, not as object. In other words, we understand Jesus to be raised from the dead. He is living here among us. His spirit is very much present within our midst. And so it's important for you to know Jesus. If you simply know about Jesus, that's just not gonna cut it. But having said that, I wanna tell you a little bit about the Bible so that um, you might be prepared, uh, whether you know a lot about the Bible or not, to know what is about to greet you. So the Bible is actually a compendium of books. If you really wanted to know the literal translation, translation of Bible, it would be library. It's a library of books uh, about a whole variety of topics uh, some of which are historical and some of which are prophetic and a lot of them uh, have to do with the relationship between God and us and each of us to each other and also about how we relate to one another. Let me begin by just telling you that there are two main categories of books in the Bible. The opening part of the Bible is called the Old Testament or I prefer to call it the Hebrew Bible. It is really all that happens that we need to know about God and about us prior to Jesus' birth. And then that is followed towards the end of the Bible. And I would say it's roughly for most of us, the last quarter of the Bible is going to be uh, the New Testament. And in the New Testament, it begins with Jesus being about Jesus and then moves on to being about the early church and then finally moves on to prophecy. Now, to be a little more specific, I'm just going to go briefly through what you will find in your Bible. First, you'll find the books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These are the beginning of all things and the beginnings of the people of God. Next come the books of history, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, uh, and that is the recording of the rise and fall of Israel over roughly a thousand year period. Next come the books of poetry. In the books of poetry, that includes Job, Psalms, Proverbs, 
Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, uh, and this was written as poetry expressing teachings about God and life. Finally, in the Old Testament, we have the books of prophecy. These include Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, uh, Zechariah, and Malachi, expressing the word of God through people raised up in times of unbelief and rebellion. <laughs> you might say times similar to ours today. All of that is contained in roughly three quarters of the book that we know of as the Bible. It's the first three quarters of the Bible comprising the Old Testament. Then comes the New Testament. Mind you, we haven't heard a thing about Jesus yet, but now we're going to hear all about Jesus, and this section contains 27 books. This section is about God's dealings with humanity during and after Christ's time on earth. First, you'll find the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, recorded, recording the early life and ministry of Jesus. Next is the book of Acts. The book records the movement of Christianity through the apostles' beginning of ministry following the resurrection of Christ. Next, which this is probably the largest section of the New Testament, you'll find the epistles. These are quite literally letters. Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, and Jude. These books contain the inspired correspondence of the apostles and others chosen to communicate God's truth. And finally, to close out the entire Bible, and of course also the New Testament, is the book of Revelation. Now, this is a book of hope and encouragement in times of greatest trial for the emerging church, as well as a glimpse into God's final victory in the culmination of history. Why is it important that you know all of this? It's important because you need to know that probably the best way to read the Bible is not from the beginning to the end. I will guarantee you that unless you are a real scholar, you're going to get bogged down in Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In fact, you'll get discouraged and say, you know what, this is just not for me. In reading the Bible, I would like you to consider beginning with the Gospels. I particularly like the Gospel of Luke, but Mark and Matthew are great Gospels to start with because this will tell you the story about Jesus. But understand, we're still learning about Jesus that's different from knowing Jesus. In order to know Jesus, I would like you to, I'd like to suggest that you spend a fair amount of time in the Gospel of John. John talks about the meaning of Jesus' life, the meaning for you and the meaning for me, and gives us some specific and great insight into the Jesus that we will know and meet along the road. And then finally, uh, the book of Acts is a great book to read prior to the epistles to look at the role that the Holy Spirit plays in, um, in empowering us to deepen our relationship with Jesus and to walk more closely with Jesus as disciples. Sometimes people ask me, well, what Bible is the best Bible for me to read? And inevitably, my answer usually boils down to this you should read the Bible that you are most likely to read. Uh, don't worry about whether it's a study Bible or not, whether it's annotated or not. Don't worry about whether it is a literal translation or paraphrastic translation or paraphrase. Here's what I want you to remember. The book that you, that you will read most is going to be your Bible. Make it your Bible. Underline things that are important to you that God's Spirit suggests speak to you. Uh, internalize that Bible. Make it yours. Um, the Bible that just sits on a bookshelf or on a coffee table 
is not really your Bible. And finally, I have this to suggest to you. In order to know Jesus, it's important to read about Jesus, but it's much more important for you to internalize who Jesus is in you. Now we have a big fancy word for that. The word is incarnation. And uh, if you paid attention to the scripture reading just before this message, you'll note that uh, part of that scripture was uh, from the Gospel of John, what we call the, uh, the prelude, chapter one, verses one through five. And this is how the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Not only does the word become flesh and dwell among us, the word becomes our flesh and dwells within us. And that is the major message of the Gospel of John. How does that happen? Well, it happens over time. Let me just say, for most of us, it's an entire lifetime. And it'll be a lifetime of reading the Bible, gaining more inspiration and understanding, and particularly this. Uh, if you try to read the Bible by yourself, that's another sure sign of failure. It's much easier to read scripture with two or three other people so that you can share intimately of how your experience of Jesus matches up with what you're reading and have time to process what other people are saying and how Jesus, if you'll excuse the word again, how Jesus is incarnated in them. Sometimes we make a category mistake. I've heard this oftentimes, that people like to refer to the Bible as the Word of God. Again, refer back to the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 5. The Word of God dwells among us and dwells within us. The Word of God can be understood best through the Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament. But let's make sure that we understand that the Bible is not the Word of God because we're not called to worship the Bible. That would simply be what? Bibliolatry. We're not going to be worshiping the Bible. We're going to be worshiping God through the way of Jesus. And we're going to do that best by knowing Jesus. And so here's what most happens for most of us. Before we ever open the Bible and start reading, most of us will come to begin to know Jesus by experiencing the lives of other people in our midst, particularly if you're, if you're involved in a church. Because what you'll see is little pieces of the divine being exhibited and expressed through those who are part of the faith. And so as you begin to read the Bible more and more, uh, names of people who you've already met, who nurtured you growing up, you'll think of them and think, you know what, that's exactly what he or she said. That's how they acted. And you'll get a sense for how the Word of God jumps and leaps off from the pages of the Bible and is incarnated in you. This is not a head exercise. It's primarily a heart exercise. How do we take the words of scripture and move them from head to heart? Some of us begin by memorizing sections of the Bible, but if our uh, words just cease at memorization, uh, we never quite make that journey from the head to the heart. It's only when the meaning of those words become expressed through our speech and through our actions. In fact, if you, if you can think about incarnation as a process, the process is that the word of God oftentimes enters through our head, is transforming us through our hearts, and is taking expression in the world through our hands. Head, heart, and hands. Now here's what I'd like to ask you to do. I'd ask you to take the Bible this very day, the one that means most to you, the one that you think you would read, and pick it up and whether the last time you read it was yesterday 
or a year ago or 20 years ago. Crack it open. Open it to one of the Gospels. Think about what speaks to you in the Scripture that helps you know Jesus better. And then begin to think about how you can incarnate that word in you so that for others you become the word of God enfleshed in this world. Because just as was said of Abraham is also true of us. We are blessed not just because we need to be blessed. We're blessed to be a blessing to others who God sends our way. And so others will come to know the word incarnate in Scripture, ultimately, because they've come to know the word incarnate in you and in me. Hello, my name is Vicki Clasier, and I've been asked to talk a little bit about Bible studies and how they have enhanced my faith journey. My first disciple class was Becoming Disciples Through Bible Study, led by Tom Butler, who grew to be a, my mentor and a great dear friend. That particular class covered 70% of the Bible, and it awoke in me a need, a yearning, to get to know the lives and times of Jesus and the early Christians, along with the rest of the Bible. Being blessed with the opportunities to share with my fellow Christians Bible study is so rewarding. For I believe faith shared is faith multiplied. Not only multiplied, but it is strengthened and deepened with each and every uh, class. And whether I'm facilitating a class or there is a classmate, I find sharing the views and ideas and stories with my classmates is so rewarding and has taught me so much about God and Jesus and also about how Jesus affected the lives of those around me. Studying the Bible provides insight into what we believe and why we believe it. It offers us the why, the what, the who, and the how, if you will. For through group discussions, through the sharing of, of questions, I think that people can ascertain what those troubling uh, passages or the confusing verses really mean to them. And I get such great and joy and happiness when I am in a class and somebody goes, oh, I get it, I know what it means, because they have found the, off, the answer that God wanted them to find when studying his holy word. And finally, to everyone who has shared a Bible class to me, Thank you. Thank you for sharing my faith journey with me. Jesus, Jesus, let me tell you how I feel. You have given us your spirit. I love you so. Yeah.
You know, I really appreciate Vicki. She's been a longtime teacher and mentor for members of this congregation and uh, members beyond. And so uh, the words that she has shared take to heart. Um, the classes that she's taught, uh, the community that she's been able to form has really nourished people's knowledge of God and also nurtured them in knowing God. And with that, I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, sometimes when we open the Bible, we begin to read words and all of a sudden we found that we're halfway down the page and don't know a thing we've read. May your spirit enlighten us and guide us so that the words and verses of scripture that we read not only enter our hearts, but become expressed through our motions, our hands, our speech. Make us disciples that are on fire by the power of your Holy Spirit to live a life of obedience to you so that our lives are no longer our own, but indeed are yours. That you may have life in us and through us, that others may see the light of truth and know the grace that you have given through you by God our Savior. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses even as we forgive the trespasses of others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us for worship today. And just as I have done in each of the other two worship services as part of the series, I want to do the same today. I want to issue you an invitation. If you are on the dividing line between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus, if you're ready to take a, a step across that line and begin to develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do that this very moment. I'm going to ask you to just invite Jesus into your heart so that you will know Jesus in, a just, in addition to just simply knowing about Jesus. And for those of you who do know Jesus and have a relationship with Jesus, now is the time to commit yourself to a life of obedience. You've read about Jesus. You've spent time probably in libraries, if not this one, libraries that look a lot like this one. But it's now time to allow Jesus and the word of Jesus to live richly in you, that that word may have expression through the words you speak and through the actions you take and through the grace that you share with your hands. These are times of commitment for us. They're fragile times, but they can be times of power because the power of the Spirit dwells richly in you. I know that for many of you, that's already true. You are generous, uh, extremely generous, as you continue to give uh, of your means to Sparks United Methodist Church so that we are able to continue to have an online presence, uh, worship in person from time to time, uh, and be able to share this good news uh, far beyond what we had known as our own brick and mortar building. But we also serve out of that brick and mortar building on Tuesdays when we have our food pantry open on five days a week as we share uh, the love of God through Jesus for our little ones who we serve in our preschool and their families that bring them here and uh, accompany us in loving them. We have such a variety of other ways to serve God too. We have our 
uh, Trunk or Treat, which is coming up at the end of the month. Uh, if you're interested in that, call the church office. In fact, call the church office or just email us or send a connect card. We'll get right back to you because we want you to be able to establish a relationship with Jesus and allow that relationship to dwell in you richly and to have you grow. God has the power through a relationship with Jesus to change your life. And it's the power of his love that changes you. It's the power of his love that changes me. God bless you. Be well. Be safe. And we'll see you soon. Up my voice, I'm dancing in the joy for the power.